Today, we're going to introduce you to rhabdovirus, which causes rabies. Our story will feature a junkyard dog who has come down with a case of rabies. Front and center is our rabid junkyard bulldog, complete with an underbite and jowls. And he's foaming at the mouth. That's because he's representing rabies virus, a member of the rhabdoviridae family. Okay, let's go over some basics. At this point, you could probably tell us. Warm colors? We're talking RNA. Negative moon? Guess it's negative sense. Not a real virus? Looks like it's single-stranded. Easy peasy. Rhabdovirus has a helical nucleocapsid, depicted by our dog's curly tail. Aw, oh, how cute. Couldn't you just tie that off with a bow? Don't, though. Like, don't approach the dog. Please. Rhabdovirus is also an enveloped virus. It actually acquires an envelope when it buds from the host cell. So we'll draw a white hoodie for our dog to stay nice and cozy. And since no dog ensemble is complete without a statement dog collar, we're going to finish off our dog's look with this spiky choker. The rock star spikes on his collar will help you remember that rabies' main viral protein is the envelope glycoprotein, a spiky-looking protein that actually allows the virus to attach to the host cell. Last cool fact about rabies virus. It actually appears bullet or rod-shaped under the microscope. So we've got some scattered bullets on the ground to remind you of the morphology. Okay, okay. One more cool fact. Rhabdo actually means rod in Greek. Amazing! So, how does one contract rabies? Rabies is a zoonotic virus, meaning it's carried by animals and transmitted to humans. In the U.S., the most common carrier is bats. Although rabid dogs is the stereotype, that's really only in developing countries. Other carriers in the U.S. include squirrels, skunks, foxes, and raccoons. So let's draw on all of these friendly-looking critters. Maybe this will finally get you to stop petting all those skunks.